Rwandan President Paul Kagame has won his fourth term in office. As he begins another term, we turn our attention to the country's economic outlook, which has seen significant growth under his leadership. However, amid these economic achievements, questions about political freedom and governance persist. Nicholas Morgan has more. President Paul Kagame has secured a landslide victory in the presidential election, winning 99% of the vote according to preliminary results. Kagame, who has been in power in various capacities since 1994, cast his vote in Kigali, reaffirming his commitment to leading Rwanda towards continued prosperity. Kagame's government has implemented numerous economic policies aimed at transforming Rwanda into a hub of economic activity in East Africa. The economy witnessed a significant growth rate of 9.7% in the first quarter of 2024, driven by robust performances in the industry and service sectors. Agricultural production, particularly food crops like maize and beans, saw substantial increases, contributing to this growth. The industry sector grew by 10%, with notable increases in mining, quarrying and construction activities. The service sector expanded by 11%, fueled by gains in wholesale and retail trade, transportation and telecommunications. Rwanda's economic resurgence is evident, yet criticisms persist. Despite the economic successes, Kagame faces accusations of stifling dissent and governing with a heavy hand. Critics argue that the political landscape remains a tightly controlled, with several vocal opponents barred from running in the election. International observers were present to monitor the elections, but concerns about political freedoms continue to surface. We have freedom. We govern ourselves. There is no divisionism. He removed all of that. There used to be division based on who to Tutsi, but he abolished all of that. He abolished the IDs that showed your ethnicity. Now we are all Rwandan. Personally, I feel this is a celebration because this is what I wanted. I wanted him to win. There is absolutely no problem with the votes he got. Personally, I'm so happy. My heart is full of joy. There is so much he has achieved that ensured he got these votes. Kagame's administration continues to be credited for Rwanda's dramatic economic revival and maintaining internal peace since the 1994 genocide. As Rwanda moves forward, the focus will remain on balancing economic growth with addressing the concerns of political freedoms and human rights. Nicholas Morgan, TRT World. Let's bring in Ken Gichinga, Chief Economist at Mentoria Economics. He joins us now from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Great to have you with us. Now, this is President Kagame's fourth term. How have his economic policies contributed to Rwanda's impressive 9.7% growth in the first quarter of this year? Many thanks and indeed good morning. Um, indeed, uh, President Kagame has been a pillar of stability, uh, particularly over the last uh, 24 years. Really, uh, the remains of the genocide still continue to haunt many. And I think his uh, role in producing stability has been quite remarkable. Uh, inflation has been at around 5% over the last decade. That's way below the sub-Saharan average. And also uh, production in agriculture, in industry, but it's really the sectors, that the services sectors that have become uh, the key pillar of Rwanda. If you look at the year 2000, the services sectors contributed about 23% of the GDP. Now they contribute uh, close to 48%. So Rwanda is above all else a service economy. And also openness to investments, strategic partnerships. We've seen a huge campaign with the UK Premier League, uh, with a country like Qatar. So that focus on strategic partnerships has also been very, very beneficial. Right now, despite the economic progress, there are accusations of Kagame stifling dissent. How do these political criticisms impact Rwanda's international relations and economic stability? Yes, indeed, that is an area of concern, uh, particularly uh, even amongst investors who are trying to invest in the long term. Many of them who ask uh, what happens in the future once uh, Kagame leaves. So that has been a sore point. 
um, um, pluralism hasn't uh, been where it needs to be. And that continues to be a huge discussion, even with the neighboring countries, because uh, nobody would want to see the repetition of what happened in 1994. Now, looking ahead, what are the key challenges Rwanda must address to sustain its economic growth while ensuring these political freedoms? Well, above all else, the issue of youth unemployment uh, is going to continue becoming a problem. Uh, we've seen what the youth quake has done here in uh, Kenya, and it's going likely to spread in many parts of Africa, including Rwanda, where youth unemployment remains high. Uh, many of these young people uh, don't have memories of uh, the distant past. So for them, it's really about why can they get quality jobs. And once they begin agitating, it might uh, end up with uh, what you're seeing uh, in countries such as Kenya. So it, it's definitely a time to start addressing uh, youth unemployment, uh, really particularly sectors that can absorb a lot of youth uh, to avoid any form of disturbance. Right, and you also touched on uh, relations with the UK. How has this immigration policy that has now been cancelled by uh, Keir Starmer impacted uh, the Rwandan economy? Well, that had been a big talking point. Um, obviously, the Labour Party in the UK uh, had adverse views on that policy and it, it has been shelved. Uh, but I think from Rwanda's perspective, uh, its association uh, with big powers in the West uh, will continue. As I said earlier, we've seen uh, its ability to attract uh, investment from uh, the UK Premier League and also the NBA from the United States. So I think they'll continue pushing for multinational presence in Rwanda to give it a higher uh, stage on the platform. We've seen companies like VW set, set up manufacturing bases in Rwanda. So I think that will continue uh, so that Rwanda really continues to live up to uh, what they call uh, the Switzerland of Africa. Right, Ken Gichinga there in Nairobi. Great to have your analysis.